Welcome to another Arius Wave price action update. So in this video, we're looking at XRP, Ripple Labs. Yes, that's right. We're looking at XRP for once. Why not? And normally I'd be switching to XLM right now, but you know what? I'm going to make you wait for that because I know a lot of you want to see it. But I think that it's important to look at other coins other cryptos just to get a sense for what's going on just so you don't you know activate your confirmation bias a little too much because that seems to happen that's probably part of the reason why i actually went on a break is because confirmation bias can play a role we are human after all and no matter what kind of methodology or formula you use unless your computer is trading for you exclusively all the time then you will probably eventually come across confirmation bias and have to deal with it. So I suppose if you want to take a look at this chart, you can see that I've got a one down here. So does that mean since 2017, 18 high that we've seen a wave one down in XRP? right that that's a very interesting question and it's one that i could only answer i suppose by taking a look at the internals of this move it really doesn't fit um a zigzag pattern and that part there is probably the biggest difference between xrp and bitcoin pattern right because with the bitcoin pattern it's become more than obvious that it's an a b heading into c pattern right and like the c wave down is going to be fairly sharp and deep probably going to go very low so low that you probably don't want to know right so why would i want to just talk about that right now it's just not right so for you to even you know assume this is a wave one down that paints a pretty ridiculously scary picture for what this could be right now i understand you probably think this is a flag pattern unfolding over time etc except there's one massive problem with the flag pattern theory and i haven't even thought about this but it's just so obvious i'm looking at it right now okay so number one if you are wanting to learn aria by the way just head on over to the website figure it out sorry i can't tell you i'm not allowed to say things i'm running something to teach if you want go ahead have a look anyway so Taking directly from that methodology, which I created, the first thing that's obvious here is if this was a zigzag, then that would be a wave A, this would be a wave B, and this would be a wave C, which is in progress right now as we speak. That would be a really easy way for me to just say, you know what, it's the same as Bitcoin pattern, get over it. Uh, it's not that easy, right? It's not easy to get over anything in this market. It's actually a constant pain in people's lives and it's not good. So for me, I, I want to try to make sense of this as much as possible, even though this pattern here is a pretty bad pattern. This is pretty awful when you look at it, right? So my understanding is this is a type one weak five wave move to the downside, which means that that move that happened in 2020 was a three wave move. This here is a three wave move. And this here is a three wave move it was one, two, three, four, five. It's a weak five wave move, which means that uh, wave four can go into the price action of basically wave two, which it did, right? Uh, and that's all good. But the thing that's most striking to me at this point in time is 
not just that this is a wave one, not this is this is a wave A, because I believe this is a wave A. Not so much that this is a wave B where I've marked it out here, but what's going on right now? That's the part that is the most striking to me. And the reason for that is because if this was to be a uh, one, two, one, two pattern, like if it was going to be a wave C down here, and this was a ABC, then this pattern here doesn't really look like what it should look like, right? If you know what I'm saying. And this is why Arius Wave is the best wave methodology tool out there, or wave analysis tool, I should say. If we go to the four hour chart, okay, yes, we've had a five wave move, a correction, a five wave move, which could easily be a one, two, one, two, right? That's why it's so hard to get these things right, because these fractal patterns, they actually produce the same correction in all the corrective components of the wave component, right? The Sorry, the corrective portion of the wave components, right? And a wave component is a five wave move or a zigzag. Those are wave components. But all those wave components put together make up a larger wave component, right? So this is important. Anyway, well, actually, that's true. I, I just don't have time to explain it here. If you want to learn, I told you, yeah, I, I can teach. I can teach. I'm going to teach. January this uh, coming new year is going to be amazing. I'm going to have a lot of fun. Anyway, so that being a B wave down, we're looking for a C wave here. So the first thing that I see happening here, which is completely interesting, is this interpretation of what could be a C wave. Now, in order for that to be kind of anywhere near accurate, there's a couple of things that need to happen. One, a full correction, which I can see right here. Okay. I can see a full correction right there and a three wave move for three, a wave four, which is still unfolding. So I can just imagine we're going to get at some point uh, another three wave move to create wave five. Okay. That's what I'm seeing right now. Okay. Now, obviously it's not going to be a big, massive move to the upside and it's become pretty sort of obvious right and there's no certainties only probabilities as george gammon would say but it's become a bit clear that this is a fairly weak type one weak five wave move right so it's gonna fluff around a little bit around this area and then more than likely we're going to see uh, a d wave and an e wave and all this stuff is going to be happening roughly around the same time as the Bitcoin analysis. And yeah, we're going to see a very large move to the downside. And all this whilst interest rates are going through the roof. And mind you, my next chart that I do post will be on uh, interest rates and I might do a recap on interest rates and then obviously I'm going to have to do stock markets and then circle back to more cryptos, right? Because I'm back. That's right. I am back. I'm here to do what I do best with a reset on my confirmation bias just to get it right uh, as best as I can, get it more accurate than usual. Okay. So that's my take on the current pattern in xrp if you can't read every chart then obviously there's a problem i can't just be sticking to xlm when there's so much more going on everywhere else but i will get to xlm right yes i'm going to keep you hanging i'm sorry but that's just the way it is i don't need to i don't owe anyone any favors i'm basically a free agent if you want to learn the process you know what to do 
But if you want the updates that you are used to, well, I'm going to bring them again, but they're going to be better than ever. So the question remains, why did this not make a new uh, all-time high? I think it's becoming pretty clear now. Uh, same with XLM. Um, other cryptos didn't do that. And I think it's because they just were following the Bitcoin pattern more than this type of altcoin breakdown pattern where more than likely there is a larger, a bit, a bit different, a bit, a bit of a different pattern going on here, right? And that pattern is the pattern that I've been talking about in the stock market, which is the DE pattern of a larger part of a larger pattern, right? So that's where Bitcoin and what I can see now as uh, XRP, also XLM, they're not following the Bitcoin pattern completely. And, and you've got to ask yourself, why is that? And the reason I believe that's the case is because, well, what is XRP and XLM really trying to do? And it's trying to support the financial system, which would include these banks, which would include these, you know, mainstream type of uh, organizations, uh, especially those ones that they're supporting and those ones that are investing in the technology itself, right? I believe that those, this would be following that kind of market a little bit more closely or those kinds of markets that are in those indexes etc not to say that they are performing similarly just that it's a different pattern that's all and the larger pattern is what would be now an e-wave down which always e-waves always start off well they tend to in in, in, in most cases start off in a very choppy manner and then get very, they, they just become very sharp in the, the, the latter stages of that move to the downside or to the upside. It doesn't matter because E-waves happen up or down, right? You need to learn the waves. So that's all I've got for you now. Stay tuned. There's more to come and obviously uh, do your own research. This is not financial advice. Um, I'm just here with a fresh set of eyes using my old good old fashioned RS wave methodology here and that's not going to change anytime soon so hopefully you found this video interesting and informative thank you for watching